Uh, hello everyone and welcome to the social agency or hashtag social agency webinar. Um, my name is Louis Welcome, uh, the marketing executive at Colleague Software. Um, this is how agencies do social or could do and uh, Bill and I basically came up with this concept after having a look around and thinking well there wasn't a lot of stuff out there for agency recruiters in terms of webinars, guidance, and there's a lot of focus on the impact. So we thought we'd, uh, we'd do something on this side. Um, I call it a webinar, it's going to be more like a sort of more akin to a radio show I think where we just discuss certain topics or a hangout as we're using Google Plus. Um, I think some of the themes we'll be discussing include just the general idea of being social, what that means as a recruiter. Um, having a look at the different channels, having a look at cool tools and applications, um, having a look at content curation, which is essential in social recruiting, sourcing on social, uh, the new LinkedIn, Twitter stalking, um, as Bill put it, and uh, pictures and video. Um, I thought there were four other questions as well, which include, sort of, which recruiters are probably thinking about, which is, do I have the time? Do I have the resources? Do I trust my staff to do this? And how will this actually make me money? And how can I actually recruit do it with social media? Does it work, essentially? Um, I'm going to be monitoring the questions and any comments you have on Twitter and uh, on LinkedIn and on our Facebook page. Uh, please tweet me at ColleagueRS or, or use the hashtag social agency. And uh, that's why I'll be looking away and I'll relay your questions to the others here. I've, I've invited um, along three guests, uh, of course, Bill Borman, uh, Steve Ward, and Amanda Rasher. And the great thing about these three is that they all are recruiters. So you're not hearing from a social media guru, you're actually hearing from uh, people that know what they're talking about from a recruitment agency perspective. So I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves now. So um, it would go to you first, Bill, please. Yeah, um, well, I'm I'm at Bill Borman. I think that's probably what I need to say. I, I, I my background is uh, I've been in and around recruiting for 30 years. I've run desks. I was director of a national recruitment business that grew from uh, 70. That grew from six offices to uh, 176 in 12 years. Um, went into training agency recruiters directly as non-exec director for about six companies, and I've been involved in the social area now. So I kind of um, straddle between having an agency recruiting background and working more in the corporate and technology world now with, with, with corporate teams plus running unconferences every two weeks somewhere in the world. So, so that's me really. Um, I, I've got a passion for agency recruiting and what I think agency recruiters need to be doing right now. Um, I don't have a lot of work with agencies right now because, uh, and this isn't a pitch for work, this is, this is an observation that, um, that there's been quite a slow adoption, which is why I've been so keen on, on working with you, Louis, on developing content and just showing people what they can do. Okay, thanks, Bill. Um, Amanda, please. Um, yeah, so I've been in recruitment um, nine years now. Um, so I started off um, within construction property. Over the last couple of years, um, social has just really kind of taken me. Um, so I kind of moved through the ranks from LinkedIn and um, now Twitter, Google+, Plus, um, focusing on marketing and digital. So very much in that space um, and just really embracing it. And yeah, there isn't that many agencies that, that really get it um, from a from a sourcing point of view, yes, um, but from an engagement point of view, probably not so. Mm. Uh, and Steve? Um, yeah, I've been, um, I'm Steve Ward, I've been recruiting for I've been on to sort of 20 years, 18 years or so. Um, I was pretty, pretty much a generous recruiter for much of my time, but uh, two and a half, three years ago, um, I tripped over uh, the social media zone, um, and rather than just just doing it, I uh, also recruited in that sector as well. So I spent, I spent the last two and a half, three years uh, as a specialist recruiter in the social media and digital marketing realm, um, and would like to think as a uh, that my methodology is, is is one that kind of encapsulates what a social agency should be about because I basically mirror what my clients. 
um, and candidates do and exist in their kind of space as a, as a social entity um, and, and, a, and as a consequence of that a recruiter within it. So it's uh, so I have a certain way of working that's not the way most agencies work but it's it's one that works extremely well in my sector and, um, and, and therefore I've kind of got to grips with a lot of the way that um, a lot of social recruiting kind of uh, stuff is done. Okay, uh, thanks everyone. And um, I think perhaps, I, I mean, the first, the first question, Bill, you put on your blog article was that, or the theme, first thing was being social as a recruiter. I guess, what does that mean in general? What, what's getting to the core of what that means? What, what do you <coughs> have to be, to do to be social? Well, I think the biggest, well, talk to people actually, and that kind of sounds strange, but talk to people in whatever whatever channel, I, I think recruiters over the years, um, and this isn't just an online thing, this is, this is, this is also a, uh, a, a, an in-person networking thing, have become very insular in terms of, um, it's been very much about the jobs and jobs need filling, very transactional, very process of talk to people when you, specifically when you need them, don't speak to them again or expect them to darken your door when you don't. Um, being social kind of changes that because it's it, it, it's taking an attitude of uh, of conversation and relationship building um, and building those relationships in order to uh, to really um, not not develop business but develop a community. And it's kind of you feed the community and the community pr provides and feeds you, which is kind of what I think is the lesson we've all learned that, that when you that, that when you're part of a community rather than taking from a community, it, it takes a very different mindset. Not least, it means sometimes helping and talking to people you're never going to make any money out. Uh, that's probably the first barrier that I, I know what Steve would say on that, but that's the first barrier I've seen um, in terms of agency adoption is kind of, we'll have the conversations where we can see the direct cash benefit, and where we can't, then we won't waste our time. You have to have a marketing attitude. It takes a very long time, I guess, rather than an immediate sales attitude. But, um, I, I don't think it does take a long time. Um, but it takes it, time it, to build a long time. It takes a lot of uh, prospecting and understanding what you're doing. And there's clever ways in which you can uh, organise the people who you're connected with. But it means you're not just talking about jobs. Uh, Amanda, sorry, you were going to say. Yeah, I think Steve's um, blog this week really hit the nail on the head about how um, recruiters are perceived, and actually, what the amazing thing is about social media is that it gives recruiters the chance to be perceived as something other than just salespeople that are very transactional and are only after people when they want something. Um, where social media increases touch points, it strengthens relationships. So. From a business development point of view, it can actually ha it has massive advantages. Well, you know, do you want to be seen as a leader in your market, or do you want to be seen as a feeder in your market? Definitely, you want to be seen as a, a leader in your market. You you want you know you shouldn't you should be highly regarded within what you do. So for me, when I see on Twitter that I'm on this and I'm on this that uh, for digital marketers as opposed to recruitment this, I know that I'm doing my job well because I'm not just talking about jobs, I'm not just advertising. Yeah. There's an element where it's about taking the hat off being purely a recruiter. Taking the hat off? You yeah, no, well, not your hat off. No, put it back on, Bill. <laughs> um, you, the, the recruiter hat always has an element of a, there's a barrier that people put up when you're a recruiter, particularly in certain markets as well because of the reputation of some of the, the the industry within that kind of space so it surprises people when you and as a recruiter you come with with something useful with something good a contribution to the to the marketplace rather than merely a, you know, it's been mentioned already the taking kind of element so recruiters can be very kind of can be very big takers and that whole business about how long it takes whether you look at it from a, a marketing perspective or whether you look at it just from good business building perspective the, the market the social marketing route it's not it's not as fast as the opportunity of picking up a telephone and making an instant sale from in the, within two minutes of speaking to somebody on the phone it might take longer than that but the reality was that we never used to make two minute sales anywhere on the telephone that often we had there were a number of 
journey, layers of the journey that have to be reached to get to the point where we win a, win a client or, um, or such. And I think it's the same with social, but it's just a hell of a lot more enjoyable along the way. But you've got to add some value to what you're giving. It's not a, it's not a sales process. And that's what kind of makes it, for a recruiter, I just think that makes it massively more enjoyable. Um, more than Steve, I've got, probably got to argue with that point. Um, I, I, I would, I'd like to pick up that point because I think it is a sales process. I just think it's a different yes, sales process. Yeah, it is. Yeah. How, how I explain it's it. Development, it down, I think of it. Yeah. But, um, and I think actually this applies to all of life. This isn't just a recruiting issue. Um, we don't want to be sold to, but we want to buy. Yeah. So we, we want to be connecting with people who we can buy from at different points. It, it, uh, different points in our life for all kinds of things and recruiting and jobs and careers is kind of um, one of the most critical things in people's lives mm. but from your days um, when you were training how many yeah. calls would you say it took to build a relationship because this is the thing that I think recruiters forget now so when you people go it's better just to pick up the phone actually what I want to do is I do still want to pick up the phone but I want to pick up the phone and it's a warm call at the other end I'm not having to do a cold call and then have three or four calls until it that relationship develops. So actually, if I can develop that relationship online and then pick up the phone and that person wants to buy from me because they trust me at that point. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, what, what, what I, 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 I compare it to uh, being in the pub. And one thing recruiters are normally pretty good at is being in pubs, you know, with, with, with social animals in that respect. And... Um, I have a local pub that I go to in which I have a whole group of people that I mix with and socialize. Um, one of them happens to be an accountant. I actually don't talk to them about accounts or bookkeeping or anything else. I talk to them about all kinds of other stuff, apart from the, uh, the, the one month of the year when I've got a tax return to do. And then, I'll, and then he becomes my expert and my go-to. And I think the communities we're in are like that. People are aware of who we are. We contribute where we can. Sometimes we're contributing to tasks which are not going to make us money, but the the point is you're becoming the go-to person. You're, you're the one who you know. It, and Steve is really a great example of this. Um, whenever Steve's got a job or a role that needs filling, he just goes to his community and people recommend people and say, "I'll connect with this person, talk to that person," because Steve's regarded as part of that community rather than somebody who's just walked in and said, oh, does anyone know anyone? To which point everybody yeah. says, no, you, you, you earn that trust. I, I think your net work and the amount of time you put into it is actually your net worth. It is, and I, I think as well, you it, it, you go back to the word contribution, but to be social. I kind of lost. lost a bit yeah, I've lost the sound. Off. Yeah, auto's crackling a little bit. Um, I mean, Steve, yeah. we yeah, we've better? got you back in. Am I here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you hearing yeah, me now? Yeah. Yeah. It's live. Let's start again. Yeah. Steve. Okay, cool. Sorry, yeah. It's it's a it, it's the contribution piece. Good meal, Bill. Shall I shall I log out? Log. Out? Yeah. Yeah, you drop out. We'll, we'll keep talking. I think contribution and also. Right. Um, audience the, the, the point is uh, you can build your audiences and your communities in very segmented ways so the example I give is um, some work I've been doing recently with some recruiters on Twitter and Twitter lists means we know in one column of tweet there everyone who's tweeting about anything is a C++ programmer and the recruiters I'm working with um, actually uh, they recruit C++ programmers so even if someone's tweeting on a Friday night about Strictly Come Dancing or I'm a Celebrity or about the football or about any kind of general topic of conversation, um, you, you can be comfortable replying to that and, and, and creating relationship with the fact that you're creating relationship with target audience. So you can be strategic about um, you can be strategic about the communities and networks that you build and that you contribute to. Um, safe in the fact that everybody within that community is either at, at some point a potential candidate, potential client, or more importantly, connected with people who could be either when you need their help. Steve, I think have we got. Sorry, Amanda. Have we got Steve back here? Hear me. 
Yeah, I was with Ian Ashley. Are you okay? Sorry, yeah. Yeah, she's yeah, dodgy I... Brighton internet. Yeah, it was just having a moment. That was all. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, sorry, carry on. Carry on. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, and I was going to say about Bill's blog, obviously, when you were talking in your blog about um, how you um, recommended that obviously your consultants used to read the paper. And actually, yeah. by listening on social channels, it gives you that chance to really, your knowledge base, you know, because you're actually listening to conversations that are taking part in that industry. So you know the latest trends, you know the latest products, what people are talking about, what the concerns are. Yeah. So from an expert point of view, if you're a specialist recruitment um, consultant, you should be listening to those conversations. Yeah, I listen to conversations and stories, and this is where I think... Um, Recruiters who apply themselves do particularly well in social media because we know a little bit about an awful lot of things. You know, for me, that's how I've, I think I've been able to build um, quite a big network. One, because I've been very willing to contribute to that network. But the other thing is that um, it, uh, it the, the, the other thing is I'm able to have in exactly the same way as I am um, at a networking event or anything else. Um, conversations and some information about a little bit. And I think when you're a recruiter working in an industry, you're talking to lots of different companies, you're talking to lots of different candidates, you're hearing what's new, you've got a lot that you can add that you don't necessarily think that you can. Uh, and you can have very valid conversations. But this learning piece, you know, I I, I was started off on it, go read a, a newspaper and a trade magazine. Read the newspaper every day, the trade magazine. Uh, that was normally at five o'clock in the morning before we started work. But read the newspaper and read the uh, read the trade magazines um, and make sure you're current in your industry and you know what's going on, so you can have a meaningful conversation. Now all of that news and content is delivered to me by LinkedIn, by Twitter, by Facebook, whatever it is. So yeah. you know, I, 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 the reason I wrote that blog post is I think it's hidden. Um, you know, I, I think it's actually hidden benefit that, that people overlook that this is the best place you can do your learning yeah i've got a question here from hannah, hannah mcdonald's she says i agree that social media is important and picking up the phone but you just can't beat face-to-face -face sales right well, it's not yeah. yeah but a lot of my relationships start online <laughs> yeah. and then they go offline so a relationship yeah, yeah. should never stay online you should try oh, and develop that relationship and you know meet face to face I think social media has created more reasons for people to meet because we're speaking. Of, you know, it's not created less reasons to meet the right people, and it's made those meetings a lot more comfortable. Because if you think about um, before we had some kind of introduction or relationship, when you first met someone face to face, you probably spent the first couple of meetings dancing around, really, just trying to find that common ground where you could have a conversation. The same as any relationship when when you meet a stranger. Um, the difference is the people that, w that I'm meeting now, in theory, it, and for me sometimes that means flying across the world. You know, I was in South Africa last week. I'll go into a room of yeah. which um, 70 or 80 people feel they have a level of relationship with me or a conversation or know about me, and we're not doing that dancing about bit. We're getting straight down to, to talking what it was that we arranged to meet about. Uh, I think... Um... If we, let's move on to the next point. Um, the channel's broken down. I mean, do, does do, does anyone want to sort of talk about a particular channel or or recommend a particular channel? I mean, Bill, you're obviously good, and Steve, all three. I mean, Twitter's the Twitter seems to be the exciting one, but obviously you've got LinkedIn as well, which seems to be the one all recruiters are on. Does anyone have anything to say about the channels in particular? Yeah, see, with LinkedIn, I think recruiters are ruining LinkedIn for other recruiters, to be honest, which is why actually not that many recruiters are on Twitter, um, which is, for me, that's why it's my preferred channel, and Google Plus is going to be my next channel. So I've, I think don't get stuck on a channel for too long, but if a channel's working for you and it's where your people are, then stick with it, because Facebook, for me, I don't get on with from a recruitment perspective. That's because you're old. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I think Twitter to me is is uh, it's, a, it's a funny one because I, I recognise that recruiters have had a real struggle with that, and it was interesting. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, through, I'll... through Twitter. I'm, I'm, I'm cutting out again. 
You're back and, now. And, so um, carry on, sorry. Yeah. Okay. And 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 the, the reality is that recruiters don't seem to understand that casual conversation can lead to business relationships. And that's what the that's the challenge for a recruiter is to understanding that when you go to Twitter, it's not business from minute one. And that's where I find a lot of recruiters have a bit of a problem is that they can't um, they can't do the cornflakes conversation. They come the thing I always say about the fact that when if people grumble about people using talking about their breakfast on Twitter, but if one of my potential clients is talking about their cornflakes on Twitter, then I'll go and talk about cornflakes on Twitter the because it's the opportunity to talk to clients in a way that you'd never otherwise have the opportunity. But it, sales, sales, and the way we present ourselves to clients is always a, a, a demonstration of our expertise. That's what it's always about. It's about proof and demonstration of our expertise. Ways of social channels like Twitter, are, there are other ways, is another way of demonstrating your expertise along the journey as well because some of the content you produce has got to be about the work that you do, the, the accreditations that you get, the people that have recommended you, the endorsements you receive from other people. So it's another way of, of, of getting a message across without having to do it in a very kind of formal spiel kind of message. And, and I think that's a challenging thing for recruiters that I see is that they just can't yet I kind of understand how the, the, the Twitter sphere can give them the kind of... Can't move off the belt and braces approach to Tony Burke and, you know, great stuff 20 years ago. What's your bill? <laughs> yeah, it's, an, it's, a, it's another way of communicating. I think we're not... But it, it, I, I like what you, what you always say, Bill, about the pub analogy with Twitter because that's exactly what it's like. It's... it's and there's, but there's a lot of people in that pub as well. And there's a lot of, and if you've cho chosen who you follow co correctly, there's a lot of very relevant people who are in that pub with you. And it means you have a different kind of conversation. But it doesn't mean you don't. We all, we've all won as recruiters. Lots of business in pubs, uh, and on golf courses, on on and in, and in rooms that you that don't relate to our recruitment office. Twitter's just another example of that. But it should be no different yeah, to your aftercare on Monday morning. Yeah, um, I, I, I probably want to break the channels down slightly differently in that yes. um, a lot of the recruiters I'm talking and I see the way that you work, Steve, and the way in which you've built a network in the sector you're in, which, which yeah. is perfect. But if I'm looking at the channels, I, I think we're beginning to get um, some defined use and benefit, which we've been kind of fishing around with for a long time. So I'd yeah. break down the channels as this right now, and obviously they... They change on a regular basis. Different features are added. LinkedIn um, has two primary two primary sources. Um, number one is the obvious sourcing channel because the data is organised in a way in which it's very easy to reach people. But number two, um, probably more importantly, it's it's the place for very targeted sharing um, because you know your LinkedIn network is going to be is going to comprise of normally about 70% relevance around the professional area that you work in. So if you're getting shares or increasingly updates or comments within LinkedIn, very, very powerful for that. It's also the channel where you should start sharing any content because trending content gets recommended to people similar to the network you're making up, which is going to be your target audience. And if you post to LinkedIn and post a LinkedIn update, and you take that update and post it to Twitter, every time there's a tweet or a comment or a like, um, that counts as a, 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 a as a trending point on LinkedIn, which means your content is getting more and more promoted in a very targeted way to the right audience. So that, that's LinkedIn for me. It's, it's a mixture of the targeted content sharing, the very segmented, relevant audience. Um, and then you've got the group bit, which is where you can actually engage and meet people. Twitter has two, pur three purposes for me, really, as a channel. Um, the first one is it is the place you can introduce introduce yourself to strangers. You can just talk to people. doesn't matter what they are or what they do. It was the first channel where you could follow anyone you want. You could connect with anyone you want. The second part is um, if you use Twitter lists properly and an application like TweetDeck where you're able to put people in there, you can organise your, uh, you can organise people in, in, and understand people in a very focused way. So, uh, I said earlier, we, you know, in for some of the recruitment, IT recruiting projects, we'll have lists of people who work at Dell, lists of people who work at um, 
the list of people who work at competitive list of people who have particular programming languages. So we can look inside their content, see what they're talking to and what they're doing. And actually, based on the information you provide to Twitter, the new Twitter has been very good at recommending people in terms of being really relevant to the, the audience you're looking for. Um, and the third area is it, it, it's a great place for stalking people. You want to be candidates or clients. You can see, basically, exactly what they're doing. And perhaps in the next webinar, we'll talk a bit more about about Twitter. And it's a great search channel. So if you're putting jobs in there, the second biggest subject that gets searched for on Twitter is jobs. So if you're putting jobs in there using a jobs hashtag, not job, jobs with an S, um, you, you're going to get click throughs. You're going to get a high click through rate. Uh, the third channel for me is Facebook. And Facebook is where people, uh, and big point I'd make there is you, the advent of pages. You don't need to be friends. I don't need to give you access to my drunken college pictures or anything else um, to be a, for you to be a fan of my page. What I do need to have very much, LinkedIn and Facebook work on a system which is called EdgeRank, which um, awards points for interaction. So it's three points for a comment, two points for a share, one point for a like, um, at, at, and they decrease over time. So even if you've got a million fans on your page, if only 10 people are actually interacting with your page, only 10 people will be seeing your content. So it, they've really built a channel which is about um, interaction and engagement and um, building a relationship over time, which is what, what, what I think Facebook is for. Um, and, then, and, then we, and then we get into Google+, Plus, which is very targeted sharing, it's essential for everyone to be in Google Plus in terms of Google Juice if you want to want to be raising your ranking on SEO, particularly registering content under authorship. So Google is very, very structured data for reaching the right people, doing things like Hangouts and, uh, and innovative stuff. So I think the channels are beginning to get uses of where they fit in and the, and the job you need to do. And, and for other people, I think it's also a personality thing. That there's people in the same way as it is in life, there's people who would want to go to um, very formal networking business events where the topics are very much business. They're going to like the LinkedIn channel. There's people who are going to more like to go to the um, networking hangout type events who are going to be more comfortable with Twitter. So, well, you know. your, your candidates and clients might not be on the, in all the channels, and obviously there's no point being on the channels where, where you're talking about Louis, that's a myth. That's a no, myth to say think? the candidates aren't there, the, the clients aren't there. I, I, I can tell you now, um, any social media channel is representative of a proportion of the population. What they're not there, there for necessarily is looking for jobs or wanting to talk about recruitment, which is why you need right. to take a more, more rounded approach. But to believe there's sections of the market which are not somewhere on social, um, it's just a myth. And also the, the the point with that, I think that you know, I, I had a conversation once with somebody who does uh, mining, engineering, um, tunneling, and all that kind of stuff recruitment, and he quite rightly said that none of his candidates and clients were going to be sat on Twitter because they weren't. We did a search; they weren't there. But the people who were there were journalists, uh, yeah. prominent people within that sector globally. And um, by being the guy, the recruiter in his industry who was there, that gave him exposure to people who were significantly heard within that industry. So everybody well, knows... Although, strangely, Steve, actually, you're mentioning mining. I did something in South Africa because mining is big in South Africa yeah, and Australia, is, yeah, so I've yeah. been looking at that recently. Yeah. Um, and uh, we've been finding the people, but the way in which we've been finding the people in all the social channels, yeah. which includes searching in blogs and Google+, Plus, is not searching for bios. Right. Yeah. What yeah. we found is, if not you look, right, <laughs> yeah, if you're searching for a bio on mining, what you tend to come up with is mining recruiters. Yeah. yeah. For example, yeah. but yeah, searching correct. for content, so that's identifying the um, geek words, the, the yeah. unique words which one person who works in mining would yeah, say to another, right. yeah. Yeah. Um, and how they'd exchange, and you find people that way. And there's a real great application for doing that called Social Pro that's free. Social bro, bro as in brother or mo bro like me, you know, I'm social bro. So anyone listening in, I say go away and play around with that and don't go look for bios. People don't label themselves in the way that they do on LinkedIn. Um, go and look for 
geek words that the conversations people will be having. Find the conversations and join them. And, and you'll find them on Twitter. You'll find them on Facebook. Um, you'll find people on Facebook. You know, especially the mining industry, we found um, that eighty percent of mining engineers we looked at had Facebook accounts because they work remotely, and that's the way they kept in touch with their family. Yes, yeah, so you fa Facebook definitely. I think you find those people. Twitter's the one they're less likely to be on. We, we sort of found, but um, but it, the, 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 that, there's that other challenge. It's that um, the bit you mentioned earlier about talking to people who actually won't make you money directly. Who 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 aren't actually yeah. candidates and clients, but it's yeah. the people who influence our candidates and clients are um, are quite important advocates yeah. to us, and they're they're, they're still a, a as part of our kind of communication strategy as recruiters. We should be aware of the people who influence the market. Oh, exactly. I mean, uh, I've ended avidly. up on Radio One. I've ended up on um, I've ended up on news radio yeah. programs because of tweets. Yeah. Yeah. And I've kind of become rent a quote. People know they've got to know me in the community that when they want something quick, best way to get it is to tweet me and I'll respond and then we'll get on a phone call and um, the next thing I know I'm on the news. Yeah, but what I would say though is I think recruiters. That, that's not bad for a recruiter. Um, I would say the recruiters need to find the channels that they feel comfortable. So Facebook for me is one that I'm never going to be happy to recruit on. And um, so I would rather focus on channels where, and not every channel. Um, Can I just so ask you why that train. is, Amanda? Can I just, just ask you why that is? It's because I think it's more, to do with my, yeah, it's more to do with my personality that I see Facebook as a very personal channel and I wouldn't want to be... I, it's very My platform is very, very closed and I'm beginning to open it up. But historically, it has always been very closed. So it's only been close family or friends that I've wanted to interact on sure. there. So what I don't really want to be sold to. Pardon? Yeah, what about a fan page? Um, yeah, we've got. I've had a fan page. Um, it doesn't do a huge amount. That I would say, you know, obviously there are sectors like social workers, like nurses, where it works better. But within what I recruit for, not so much. Which is what? Um, marketing and digital. So they they are the more instant access is Twitter for me. Um, yeah, Facebook. Uh, Facebook is not a high volume. Um, thing for me, I don't look for mass mass numbers on Facebook, but I where I slightly disagree with you, Amanda, is that I I I feel it's an essential place to be. Um, I don't I, I, and and with with the world of me being able to post in multiple places through a, a tool like Ho Hootsuite, where I can post to Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus and um, and LinkedIn all at the same time if I want to, if I want to do a mass thing like that, um, I don't need to spend an enormous time on Facebook. But I've got candidates because of Facebook. They don't need to be. They don't need to like my page. They don't need to like them. It's just the, it's the visibility factor that um, that has worked for me with Facebook. The fact that I'm still putting, trying to put interesting content through it. It just it, it, everything I put on there goes to Twitter as well, and then it draws people through another kind of way. So it's a visibility thing. I don't spend ridiculous amounts of time there, but I've found it to be ridiculously useful of, of late. Really, really useful. It's the engagement over longer periods of time. People engage with pages in different ways. Yeah. Before, before we yeah. leave channels, I, I, what, what, are, what are people's opinions on company pages versus individuals? And are recruitment agencies, or should they be comfortable with letting their recruiters? Do you want to whisper that again, Louis? I'm whispering, am I? Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Can you hear me, Louis? Yeah. Oh, hold on, I know where. One second. Bill, do you want... Oh, here we go. There My we mic go. fell off. That's it, I can hear you there. <laughs> no wonder no one was listening to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yes, yeah, sorry, what I was saying was um, what the importance of having individual recruiters, recruitment consultants on these channels, rather than... Or, or versus having company pages, and are recruitment agencies, or should they be comfortable with letting their consultants loose? Um, I obviously think they should be, but I mean, obviously on LinkedIn you're on as an individual, but on you Twitter, mean should they like, accidentally trust them? Yeah, sure, yeah. But on Twitter, is it worth having a company account? Really, should all your consultants be on there as individuals? Is what but I'm the consultants, the account. consultants are probably already on there, but they're tweeting from their own personal. So you know they're there, but what when I'm speaking to agencies, the one thing that comes up is control. But if your consultant's already there, potentially moaning about what a good or bad day they've had, would you not prefer that they're there being an advocate to your brand, actually mm. 
interacting and engaging. But I would yeah, say I it's always got to be individuals as opposed to company pages. I remember from True London, Steve saying we were talking about this when it's a lady there was asking, you know, what rules should be in place? How do they stop recruiters misbehaving on social media? And I think chill out was sort of basically the, the response. <laughs> it was a bit like that. So, yeah. <laughs> I think somebody else said that. <laughs> but yeah. uh, no, it was because I mean. Your individuals, your personality of your brand. I mean, your logo is never going to win your business. It's the individuals within your business that are going to attract people to your business. Now, sometimes we slip up. Sometimes we say things that are the wrong things to say in certain circumstances. We've done it for years on telephone. We've done it for years on email. But those moments are minimal. But if we're employing adults to pick up telephones, to write emails, we're employing adults and paying them 25, 30, 40 grand a year, then I think we can trust them to write a few tweets um, on a day-by-day -day basis to try and build up a network for their business. They're, they're, they're going to do 90%, 95% good, and it might do 5% bad, but that 5% uh, that bad is hardly going to change the, the wave of company uh, um, success, that's for sure. So oh, by I, the way, I I've got to um, jump in because I've, uh, I've just got a text message. We can't use an old-fashioned technology, but I've just got a text message from Elkie Holland. <laughs> From Prospectus IT who's listening in. So hi Elke. And Elke said um, Elke's basically given me two points. Um, I think she's somewhere without a, a single. Uh, she said I'm, I've had some great success on Facebook by watching community pages there. Yeah. Opened up international place, placements and also opening opening myself up personally to my audience because that's where they are. She was obviously working in technical IT recruitment. And the point she's made in terms of recruiters is if you don't trust your recruiters, then don't don't let them on the phone. It's exactly yeah, the same. Exactly, thing. yeah, I've made that um, point. <laughs> yeah, and, and she also points out I'm being cheeky and she's multitasking. Um, so, <laughs> we're, we're, uh, but, but that's another, I, I think that's a really important point. You know, if you don't trust your recruiters, what, what are you oh. doing hiring? I, I think a lot of this goes back to the point. Um, if we look at the the history, and I, I talked to quite a few agency owners about this, is um, in history what used to happen was people, and I'm an old, you know, I'm a lot older than Amanda, um, and I'm probably old enough to be a dad. So I remember old-fashioned recruiting, and um, when people wanted a job, they used to have to write to me or come and see me in California. Um, and uh, when we had that, what used to happen is once I had that data or that information, that was mine, I could own it, because nobody, I could lock it in my drawer and no one else could get to it, whereas now that's just not the case, Date, you know, data's everywhere, there's no, you can't have ownership over LinkedIn connections or LinkedIn profiles, um, where the, and so there's no value in it, so where historically agencies were valued on um, their data, so how many, you know, we've bought, I've been involved in buying and selling agencies in the past where it's been about how many records have you got in your database and everything else. Um, and there was always this fear that somebody would actually pick the filing cabinet up with a full lift truck and steal it out of your office. Um, now it's not like that, you know, nothing's secret. Company addresses, contacts, names, all of that is in the public domain. So um, there's no value in data where the value is, is interpretation of data. And that's something agencies have to get around to, is understanding that and understanding that you, you, know, you just can't flood it. I agree, yeah. Um, we better move on because time's moving quickly. Um, I think what, what's been mentioned is tools and applications, but also I think it'd be better to discuss, at this point, content creation, curation, and how important that is to social or essential to a successful social recruiting strategy. Um, what would be your advice? Amanda, to start with. Um, yeah, so I, I use something called um, Sprout Social, um, and that basically, um, on my Google Reader, I have certain articles that I want to tweet about, which are very focused around in the areas. So, but I don't think it's just content curation. I think you actually do have to create your own content as well. So whether or not it be through blogs, it be through articles, um, I don't think you can just rely on other people's content. I mean, does that mean every every uh, recruiter needs to have a blog to have a successful social strategy? No, I would say that every recruitment agency should have a blog yeah, and they should yeah. be contributing. Yeah. Anyway. And I think uh, content creation is not um, is partly written stuff, and I think it's partly um, it's partly 
creating, giving something to the the, the agent. I mean, both Amanda and I are, uh, are people who put on events for the industry and things like that as well. It's no, not just about what's written that you can consume, but it's, can you set up scenarios whereby the industry can debate and and um, and gather together in a room because the power of creating that kind of on conference type thing you're thinking. Steve. Well, strangely, <laughs> those sort of things can sometimes work. Well, even <laughs> well, even all well, great yeah, idea, you, you, Bill. You're absolutely. I mean, it's exactly the case. People crave. People crave community interaction. They, 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 you know, they want to be able to share and debate their industry subject matter and all that kind of stuff that they care passionately about. And if you create, if if, if it's the if it's the recruiter in the room that creates the opportunity for them to have discussion, to have content that's delivered by mouth or by presentation or whatever, then it, again, it, it adds value to what that recruiter is is presenting to the to the, the industry. It's 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 an absolute killer. It is. It's a brilliant. Um, uh, yeah, it's a brilliant um, method. I, I, if we can be, if the recruiter can be bothered. Uh, making a recommendation for recruiters to look at that she's using uh, on her website for her agency, which is Scoopy, which is kind of a, co a collector of yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. news articles. Um, she said she has clients who send her info specifically to put on Scoopy. Um, and that uh, she embeds it on the website, and, and it's a bit like a community magazine. Yeah. Mm. Other, yeah. you know, other content is appearing on a website. Yeah. And I think when we were talking about your website, Louis, how much, you, how much is your curated news, which you're getting from multiple sources, and people are actually beginning to visit your website every day just to, because it saves them having to search and trawl. Um, I, I think there's great options. Opportunity. The other, the other point I point out slightly different is I use um, a bar um, called Visibly, which I know Amanda uses. Although as well. it, it interferes Visib. with my Sprout Social, so for the click throughs, I've got to pick one or the other. So, right um, now, what what I like about Visibly for recruiters is let's just say you recruit, um, or is you are on the bar, which appears every time that that content gets shared, you can add. Um, Things like your LinkedIn profile, your Facebook, whatever you want to put on there. But equally, you can put in an RSS feed. Now, what I've seen working really well is to put an RSS feed of the job titles in that you're advertising for at the moment, and then sharing content around that job. So, if I'm hiring for auditors, I will send out audit posts. My jobs will just be there at the top. Should you want to click on them, which is kind of um, which is using other people's content. Uh, to attract people and just saying there's a job there if you want to have a look at it. We're not pushing it on you, we're not forcing it on you, but we're, make, we're, we're using content to make you aware of where the jobs are. And that's been really successful. Um, one, of the things, one of the things that's worked really well for us is that um, with our events we get our speakers to also guest blog for us. So they create content for us. So we use video as being a really good medium that travels across all of the channels. Um, but our guest bloggers, the hits on the website, are far greater than any blogs that we can write. Yeah, and, and it's interesting. And they bring their own audience as well, which is normally in the right kind of target yeah. market. Yeah, you don't have to write all your own articles. You can you can get uh, people like you guys to write them for me. So... Uh, <laughs> So uh, yeah, so yeah. Do you write any of yours, Louis? Or... Oh, I, I think I've written a couple, a few. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, a recruiters far better place to talk about recruitment than me. But um, but it's the same as uh, recruiters can get in experts and, and influencers to write for their own agency blogs. Um, Louis, you, you're account. you're probably a really good person to ask this question because um, you know Amanda, Steve, and I look at. Um, recruiters and recruiter content probably in a different way because we're other recruiters and we, or have been recruiters so we, we look at it in that way in terms of how it appealing to market. You, If you're looking at it with your marketing head on, um, forgetting that you, that you work for a colleague for a minute and yeah. you're in, in the industry, how interesting do you see the, the, the say marketing recruiters content as a marketeer? Because you would be a potential candidate for somebody. Um, well, as as a marketing person, yeah, I think yeah. I mean it, it's extremely interesting. I mean, mainly because of the, the this debate actually we're having now. Uh, that was that's what interests me the most, the social side, and 
the fact that the recruitment industry is going through quite a big change when it comes to online and social and it's quite a dynamic time and uh, so I, I, I don't find any of this and any of the much of the material online I'm reading dull I, I find it very interesting so so what uh, attracts you you know you're sitting in your Twitter stream and you're getting um, you're getting two three four hundred links coming past your eyes what are the topics or things that make you go you know what I want to go and have a look at that well I'm obviously with with my colleague hat, and hat on, I'm obviously trying to look for anything that might interest a recruiter. So um, on the agency side, but with just as an as an individual, I do tend to fo street, sort of focus in on the social ones and the ones that are actually relevant to to the marketing and engagement and content creation side. Which um, I mean, Amanda, obviously you deal with uh, marketing people as well, so um, it's that. It's the same kind of content I'm guessing that Amanda would be putting out to her um, candidate base. So, um, the but, I will, uh, but I also think, from a search perspective, now this is why content is so important. That you know, up until now, obviously looking at SEO, looking at PPC, actually content is a relatively cheap way of how you can actually demonstrate to your audience you're an expert in what you do. Google hates SEO and keywords, by the way. They started spanking keyword stuffing and they're looking for content and um, articles and posts that answer questions that people are asking Google. Because we've got to remember at the end of the day, um, where relationships aren't established, 90% of um, ninety percent of people looking for a job start that job search on Google or a similar search engine. Mm. And it's where they're going to land. We've got, um, I think we've been penalised for using a certain word um, too much, uh, and we're working our way back up through content creation. So, which is now where it is. Content creation and social media, I think, are now the basis for Google uh, and authorship. You, 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 you yeah, have to think of Google. Google Plus, so, yeah. yeah, you, you yeah. have to think of Google as um, as a part of social, really. And the way in which you understand Google is you have to think of Google as a person. There is a Mister or a Mrs or a Miss Google. Um, who is reading all this stuff and saying, what would I recommend? What do I think is good for people? Um, one of the other things which I think is a, a tip that a lot of people have missed out is the authorship in that if I um, search for something on social recruiting and I get one of Steve's articles or Amanda's articles, I open it and I don't go back and do the same search. Google believes, well, I must like Steve's stuff. It will start to promote Steve's stuff above other results. So once you get in that circle and you've got authorship registered with um, with Google Plus, once people start clicking on your content, it creates new views and new options all the time. So it, 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 your social footprint really is the center of um, the, the center of how you're gonna how you're gonna really climb up the charts. Mm. Um, I think I think should we mention some. For the audience to say, I think some tools and applications. I mean, Hootsuite, TweetDeck, their essentials are they? Buffer. Uh, does anyone have any experience with these? Yeah. So, um, Buffer is a cheap, simple tool to actually um, to time your posts to go out to find out when the best time is. Um, I use Hootsuite. Um, one for if you use um, Gmail, um, it's reportive. Um, just to actually kind of connect with people, find out what channels they are, start following them if you've got an email address. Um, and you know about you know about reporting. Pardon? You know about reporting. LinkedIn, yeah. LinkedIn, right? So it's going to become <laughs> sent. It's going to link that email piece into into everything that's going on. Yeah, that's an equivalent one for Outlook as well. You can use um, where you can have a LinkedIn plugin, and that'll tell you if you're connected. Um, is, Outlook, is Outlook that email system old people use? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think Outlook, Outlook, and this is an important point, um, even going a little bit beyond social. Outlook yeah, is actually used by 15% 15 of emails are opened in Outlook. 70% um, of emails are opened in Apple Mail. Uh, you know, everything mobile, everything social, everything social, and everything email is mobile now. And, and you need to have these mobile, mobile, mobile optimized places people can go to. I think it's still the vast, well, certainly the vast majority of our customers will still are still on Outlook. Um, 
And uh, yeah, I'm just. Well, saying... their email opening. What devices are they actually opening the emails on? Yeah. Uh, well, at this stage, if you look at our website, they're still they're still coming through on the traditional browsers. But of course, there's going to be a shift. So. Um... Can, can I ask you a question on that? Because this is quite important. Um, yeah. Who are the people looking at your website generally? Agency recruiters. Yeah. And that perhaps demonstrates the gap in the market between mm. what the world is doing and what the agency market is doing. And that, that yeah. gives us a really good illustration of that, that when 80% of um, people are communicating, even on email, through mobile and opening mobile devices, you're saying in the agency market they're still doing it through Outlook and Desktop. Mm. And it's kind of like the social and mobile argument. Steve, I don't know what your view would be on that. But. Um. When was the last um, time you opened an email for the first time on your computer? Yeah, well, I do. No, I do. I spend the majority of my time. No, I don't. I spend the majority of the time on the phone or my iPad. So yeah. So, but I use Gmail apps still. So, I, but yeah, I, you know, I, I think there's still. I, I, I'm not yet the mobile king. Um, I'm, you know, I, I, I still yet am to be slightly convinced about whether I, whether mobile is. Is still absolutely the ultimate channel for, for recruiting on. Yes. Steve, let me give you one number that's really. I know you're going to give me a stat. Sixty percent, sixty percent of Google searches are now conducted on a mobile device. That means yes. not social is mobile, the internet is mobile. Yes. You know you yeah. can't rely on your two tin cans and a piece of string anymore. No, 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 I'm going to have to put them away, aren't I? <laughs> but no, I, 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 and then I totally get that because I think, you know, I, I sit on a train uh, for a, an hour and a bit into London every morning and, and that's what everybody sat doing on their phone, Googling stuff, playing stuff. Um, do I still, I mean, I, I think there are lots of examples where it's clearly a, a route for um, mass application driving and all that kind of stuff. Um, is it the place for a, recruit, a recruitment agency to build their um, recruiting position from, uh, I'm not sure yet, I, I don't know whether that's what we really want as agency recruiters, um, is mobile, is mass kind of mobile app presence or anything like that. I still don't see that as the key route because I think only, only so much can be done through the mobile route. And actually, so you don't think we should be doing stuff on computers then? Of course, we should be doing stuff on computers, but I want, I want, you know, where I have my problem with the, with mobile is I don't want to make it too ridiculously easy for somebody to go through the application process. Um, Why? Uh, because I don't, because I, because of the amount of emails I get every day uh, from people who um, who are just awful attempts at trying to apply for a role because all they had to do is click a button. They didn't have to make a discerning judgment as to whether they should be. Um, right for this role, whether they're culturally correct for the company that they're applying for, and whether they're actually got the skills that are required for the job. And I'll, tell you what... really, I'll tell you something really interesting I've been looking well, at um, yeah. recently, because this does tie into this, it's kind of yeah. where I think the market's going. I think once more people become aware of it, if they're, as recruiters and agency recruiters, we're going to get really excited about that. How do we cut out all this unnecessary email? The way we do that is people actually connect yeah. with you. And they only see jobs that actually they have profiles that, that match. Would be they don't see yeah. other jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've actually seen it in ten different pieces of technology this week. Really? Um, I was yeah. I was at HRO today in Dublin, um, and it's the direction people are going in that we're actually saying actually let's not show them everything. Let's just show them the stuff that they're right for. Which is good for the candidate as well because they're only seeing relevant feed, which is what the future is. You know, social is all about is about seeing stuff that's driven towards us because it's relevant to us, and 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 I, I, I that is it's the actually what jobsite.com are doing with jobsite.com in America. You know, they're doing it with a job board. Mm, you yeah. don't search jobs; you actually get jobs. You get given which well, match your profile. Sounds like bliss, Bill. I, but I, I think it's that mobile thing straight away. I think it's time for like the rest or for recruiters to catch up with the rest of the world. Because I think you've just got to look at the way um, the Olympics were viewed. So um, at twelve o'clock, the Olympics were viewed on desktops. Um, at six o'clock, it was via mobile. And um, by at nine o'clock, it was via tablets. Yeah. So you need to be marketing. But I think there's a lot of people talking about apps within recruitment that is that is still just trying to sell to candidates. And if I download an app. I want it to be useful. 
um, as a passive candidate, I'm not going to download an app. Mm. And if I'm just you want an app to do one job. I, I want a, I want an app that's going to engage me. I want an app that's going to be interesting. Yeah. Not that I'm just. But once I find a job, I'm just going to delete it or never look at it again. That's yeah, I think that was the interesting thing with with the LinkedIn um with the LinkedIn experiment, the launch of the LinkedIn I, iPhone, was they discovered actually people only want to do four very distinct jobs on LinkedIn, which is why the LinkedIn application isn't a duplication of the channel. Yeah. It's four buttons that do those four jobs. Yeah. Mm. Um, do we want to move on to sourcing? Do we have enough time? I think we're probably close to the hour. So why don't we why don't we reconvene and set another date for a social sourcing? Yeah. Um, webinar because I think I it's been great fun topic. hanging out and chatting with you all. Yep. Thanks very much, guys. Um, has anyone got any final thoughts? I'll leave that to you. No? Mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, it. Then we're done. Web is mobile. <laughs> The, the web is mobile. <laughs> Don't get people to apply. That's for another uh, webinar. I think the big, the the big thing you're going to be seeing in technology that I've been looking at. Um, I've been at um, HR Tech Europe, and I've been looking at the way with what people are developing, as you know, around the world. I, I'm looking really excited about what Jobsite.com are doing right now. Um, with Jobsite.com is the point I made to Steve. Is actually. Um, not showing people every job, just showing them jobs that are right for them. And that's going to change the whole recruiter experience. Because actually, we talk a lot about candidate experience. We should talk a lot more about recruiter experience as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, thank you all. Do, do you want to all uh, tell people your Twitter avatar addresses so they could get in touch if they want to? Yeah, yeah I'm cloud 9 rec. Sorry, have I, have I doubled up on you there, Amanda? No, it's fine. Um, I'm Rex Socially. And Bill, I think we know you. I'm at Bill Borman. <laughs> I am not at Michael Chuan. And okay. I will be entirely at Bill Borman as of probably tomorrow. <laughs> That's good. Okay, and I'm at Colleague RS. Thank you, everyone. We'll, we'll, if everyone wants to, we'll try and do another one of these down uh, in, in maybe in a month, couple of months or, or a few weeks away. So, so thanks so much for joining. Thank you, Lou. Have a good evening. Thanks, Lou. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.